I know, but like, what do you what do you want to do about it? So me and Will switched shows this week because we thought it would be fun. Well, really because I was away last weekend doing this. So now I have to talk about comics instead of video games, which is great. I admittedly don't read as many comics as Will does, but I do draw stuff. Comic book art is a unique form, and that's just because of the tights and the huge boobs. Actually, it doesn't categorize the genre at all, so why would you even say that? Comic book art is sequential art. It's illustrations that tell a story in sequence. And that's the number one most important thing that any comic book artist should know and be able to do. You have to be able to tell a story. Comic book artists are storytellers. Writers write the stuff, but they give it to the comic book artist to be able to show you what the writer meant. All in all, the story is ultimately in the comic book artist's hands. Think about the old Marvel days where the writers just filled in the word bubbles and took all the credit. Artists are very similar to directors, but directors get a lot more recognition and a lot more money. If you could tell a good story, how you could use stick figures. Look at XKDC. They're one of the most popular web comics on the internet. On the web. Web comics on the web. One year at Comic-Con, me and this dude were showing each other our portfolios, and this dude was awesome. I remember this super detailed page of Spider-Man thwipping his web and jumping off of a building into the New York City skyline. Later, I attended a portfolio review for Marvel, and the guy moderating the panel said, It's all about story. Every year, this one guy comes in with an amazing Spider-Man page, but it has Spider-Man thwipping his web for the whole page. That's not very efficient. Part of that is Marvel trying to milk as much out of a 22-page comic as possible. Well, that's pretty much it. But I guess I should say some more stuff, so how about style? It's something a lot of artists, including myself, struggle with. If you can develop a unique style for yourself, You'll become instantly recognizable, and people will keep coming back to read more of your stuff because it's familiar to them. It's also what sets artists apart from other artists. If you're an artist yourself, style is not something to stress over. It should come naturally to you. Your years of drawing experience is different from anyone else's. We all know how to draw a human head similarly, but not in exactly the same way. I might draw a circle first, you might draw a rhombus first. I might start with the nose, you might start with the eyeball. I draw a circle first. And then like a little rhombus. And then a line. And then another line. And then two dots for eyes and a line for a mouth. And s s big squiggle for, uh, for hair. And style could change too. Look at David Aja. His Hawkeye has one of the best art styles in comics right now. And he hasn't even drawn like that in his other comics. Some say panel layout's important. I disagree. I mean, a really bad panel layout could ruin a page, and a really good panel layout can make you think that the artist is amazing. Like my buddy Yannick Paquette over here. But odds are you wouldn't notice a comic with a boring panel layout if the art and story are any good. It's okay to use a simple three-column grid if that's what the story calls for. Steve Ditko did amazing things with that. People like referring to Amazing Spider-Man issue 33, where Spider-Man spends five pages lifting a giant metal structure off of his head. Ditko uses the panels to accentuate the weight that is being pressed down on Spider-Man. It's really a masterpiece, mostly because he accomplished great storytelling while also trying to piss Stan Lee off with five pages of Spider-Man doing a push-up. So again, it's all about storytelling. If the artist can't get a story across to you in an interesting way, then he's not a very good artist now, is he? Forget about human proportions, forget about perspective. Don't forget about those, those are pretty important. But you can botch those if the story's alright. Except for Layfield. Can't botch that. What do you guys think? What makes a great comic book artist? What makes a terrible comic book artist? Leave it in the comments below. At me on Twitter. At Will on Twitter. Because this is his show. And he talks a little more about comics than I do. Watch my show. Which is about video games. So like if you like. Subscribe if you really like. Thank you very much. How, what does he say? I'll see you next time. I will see you next time. I could do it like he does. Like if you like. Subscribe if you really like. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good... No. I say have a good week. Forget it. Forget it. But all that said, and I know people think he's the best Robin, but honestly, I feel like he's the worst. Well, second worst. Um, so yeah, I'm talking about things like that. When they actually hire a celebrity, get their likeness and their voice to like be the main character in the game.